Hello everyone, my name is Henry Wang, and I'm a PhD student from MIT. I'm very glad to talk about our work, Spark, Efficient Architecture for Sparse Matrix Multiplication. This is a joint work with Zhe Kai Zhang, Professor Song Han, and Professor Bill Daly. As we know, sparse matrix multiplication is an important operation in many applications, such as graph plots library for graph computing and the inference and training of comprised neural networks. However, the traditional general purpose platforms are not good at sparse operations. We found that on Intel CPU, ARM CPU, and NVIDIA GPU, the hardware utilization when doing double precision sparse matrix multiplication is under 1%. That well motivates us to build a specialized hardware for this important operation. However, these sparse matrices can be super large and ultra sparse. For example, the JCNC matrix of the Twitter graph has over 40 million rows, but the sparsity can be as low as 1 over a million. The large size makes them difficult to be stored on on-chip memory, and ultra-sparsity makes the performance easily to be limited by memory bandwidth. One efficient implementation of sparse matrix multiplication is auto-product-based method because it can have perfect input matrix data reuse. This method contains two phases, multiply and merge. In the multiply phase, each column of the left matrix will be multiplied by the corresponding row in the right matrix, resulting in an intermediate partial matrix. Just like this, we do outer product between first column of the left matrix and the first row of the right matrix to get the first partial matrix. And we repeat that to get three partial matrices. And in the second merge phase, these partial matrices will be conducted an element-wise addition to be merged into one final matrix. This method has perfect input matrix reuse because each column and row only needs to be fetched once. But for partial matrices, we need to store them to DRAM and then load back later to do the merge like this. This access incurs a large number of the DRAM access. Therefore, the output reuse of the outer product based method is not that good. The private state of the art accelerator called outer space optimizes the partial matrix DRAM access with a row wise outer output stationary data flow. They first compute partial matrices and store them to DRAM, and then they fetch the same row from all partial matrices and merge them before going to next row. Therefore, each of the partial matrices only needs to be exactly stored and load once from the DRAM. Here we, show, here we show the distribution of the DRAM axis. The x axis is the number of the non zeros of a partial matrix, and the y axis is the, round, is the round of store and load. This is from a real world matrix from Stanford Snap dataset called Email Inra. Although only the private state of R only have one round of store and fetch of the partial matrices, it's still a heavy burden and makes the system bounded by the memory bandwidth. Therefore, our main idea is to reduce both input and partial matrix DRAM access. To do this, we propose pipeline multiply and merge, matrix condensing, and Hoffman tree scheduler to reduce partial matrix DRAM access. And we also propose a row prefetcher to reduce input matrix DRAM access. We will introduce them in detail, in detail soon. First, let us have a look at the multiply and merge phases. With a multiply array, we can get two partial matrices here, and our goal is to merge them into one resultant matrix. We represent the partial matrix with the index and value format as like this. As shown in table, the goal is to find the common indices of two matrices and add the values cor corresponding to them together. And we also keep the other values and, and indices unchanged. So this is essentially a merge sort process. In CPU implementation, it has to walk two pointers on the two indices vectors to compare them one by one to get a result like this. However, this process is very slow because it is serialized in time. 
Therefore, our idea is to parallelize in space instead of serialize in time with the help of a specially designed merge sorter. The merge sorter is built with an array of comparators. Still the same example, we put the first index array to the top and put the second index array to the left. And then we will compare each index in the first array to each index in the second array and get a comparison results like this. And then we will also add two auxiliary rows and auxiliary columns around the compared array to facilitate further computation. Then we will separate the comparison results into multiple diagonal groups marked by different colors. Here in this example, there are in total eight diagonal groups. For each diagonal group, we will find one and only one boundary tile which separate the greater than symbols and smaller than symbols. Here we mark the boundary tile in the red circle. For the boundary tile, we will output a smaller index of its two input indices as a result, like this. For example, in this boundary tile, 3 is smaller than 4, therefore we output 3. We repeat this process to each of the group. The resultant vector here is actually the sorted vector of two input vectors, and we will find the repeated indices and add the values corresponding to those indices together to do the merge. So now we get the merge sort results of two input arrays. Note that this whole process for these two input uh, index trunks can be finished into only one single clock cycle because there is no d data dependency between those uh, indices. The previous case is the merge of two partial matrices. We can use multiple levels of merges to form a merge tree to further improve the parallelism. For example, if we have four par uh, partial matrices to merge simultaneously, we can use one level of the merger to merge A and B, C and D, and then another level of merger to merge their outputs, like this. Ideally, if we can merge all the partial matrices on chip, then there is no need for zero access of partial matrices. However, the number of the intermediate partial matrices is actually equal to the number of columns of the left input matrix, which can be up to 10 million in the real cases. Clearly, we cannot af afford a merger with 10 million parallelism, and the practical implementation only has 64 parallelism. Therefore, we have to do multiple rounds of merge, which can incur store and load of partial matrices for many times. Here, we also visualize the rounds of store and load of partial matrices after this technique because we do not have the row-wise stationary as in outer space, so the rounds is larger than baseline, and the derive axis is also increased. But this technique is actually necessary because it can enable the following several optimizations. Because the number of the par partial matrices far exceed, ex exceed the merger parallelism, our idea is to reduce partial matrices with matrix condensing technique like this. In this example, we have three columns originally, but we can condense some of the non-zeros to the left and get a condensed matrix with only two columns. Therefore, when we conduct outer product, we only need to do the outer product with two columns instead of three. So we only have two resultant partial matrices, which is smaller than the previous three partial matrices. In the real cases, this technique can reduce the number from the number of partial matrices from several millions to tens or hundreds of partial matrices. Here we showed the number of store and load load round after matrix condensing. We can observe that the number of partial matrices is reduced, and also as a result, the round of store and load is also reduced. The DRAM axis is shrinked by 5x in this step. After matrix condensing, we only have hundreds of partial matrices, much fewer than before, but still exist the merger, the merger parallelism. We found that most of the partial matrices are actually very small, containing few, uh, very, very few non-zeros. 
Therefore, the order of partial matrices merge can make a big difference. Intuitively, we want to merge those small matrices first and largest matrix in the last round, because after the last round, we do not need to fetch any partial matrices. Here is a simplified example. We have a merge tree of parallelism 4, and one scheduling method is to use a balanced merge tree. We will first merge four yellow par partial matrices and store the partial matrices to the DRAM axis. And then we merge four blue partial matrices and store the results to DRAM axis, uh, DRAM. And then three green partial matrices and store to the DRAM. After that, we fetch back the results from the DRAM and then do another round of the merge. The total DRAM axis is the sum of those intermediate nodes, which is 69 in this case. Here we can see another example with a Hoffman tree. The total DRAM axis becomes 16, which is much smaller than the previous one. Therefore, we can see that the total DRAM axis is actually can be compute as the sum of the width times depth of all leaf nodes minus one constant which has the similar form with the Hoffman tree coding. The weight of the symbol is similar to weight of a node, and the length, uh, length of the symbol is the depth of a leaf node. Therefore, if we can build a Hoffman tree and do the merge according to the tree, then the DRAM axis can actually be minimized. Here we show the DRAM axis distribution before and after Hoffman tree scheduling. The x-axis is in log scale. We can see that load and store is further reduced compared to the previous one. And also we do a comparison with the baseline outer space. We slightly increase the load and store of the small partial matrices, but we reduced load and store of the largest ones to zero. Therefore, the DRAM axis is largely reduced. A sad effect of matrix condensing is that the axis of the red matrix become irregular because one condensed column requires multiple rows of the right hand matrix. That leads to more data access. So actually we need a cache to improve the data reuse of the right hand matrix. Because we actually know the exact order of the rows we need in the right hand matrix, so we can actually fetch the rows ahead of time and also use an entry buffer to do to do the cache for them. We can achieve near the optimal buffer replacement because we know the exact sequence. After this, we can see that we can reduce the DRAM axis further. The blue bar in the histogram rep uh, represents the DRAM axis of the part of the right hand matrix. For evaluation, we synthesize our design and get the power and area number. Comparing to the baseline, we have similar we have smaller area and lower uh, power consumption. We evaluate the performance on Salesforce matrix collection and uh, Stanford network analysis project dataset. Our design can achieve around 10 gigaflops, which is 4x faster than the outer, outer space baseline and around 20x faster than the Intel CPU and GPU. We also compare with the ARM Armadillo li library. And, and our design is around three orders of magnitude faster than ARM um, CPU, CPU. Our energy efficiency is around one gigaflows per watt, which is six x better than outer space and several hundreds times better than other general purpose platforms. We also evaluate the performance of our design on synthesized ARM matrices to see what is the performance for different density. Spark is in, uh, on, on average can achieve around 10 to 60 uh, faster than the Intel CPU MKR library. And our design is also more stable and scalable when the, when the density of the matrix going down from 6 to the 10 minus 3 to 5 to, 5 to the 10 minus 5. Compared to the MKL, our performance degradation is smaller. The MKL has degradation of around 6x and our design have only around 2.7x. We also conduct the area and power breakdown of our design. And we can see that for the area, the largest part is the merge tree and second large is the row prefecture. And for, for the power consumption, 
The larger part is also the merge tree, and the second one is the high bandwidth memory. The, po uh, the power of the row professor becomes the third lar lar largest. In conclusion, our Spark focuses on reducing both input matrix and partial matrix theorem access. We use an entry merger to pipeline two faces and a uh, Hoffman tree scheduler to find optimal order to merge the partial matrices. The real world is a sparse world, and most applications deal with sparse data. With Spark, we hope that we can support a wide range of important real-world applications such as sparse graph computing and sparse NNs more efficiently and more effectively. Thank you very much for your attention, and you can find more information on our project website. Thank you.